guys, today we're going to take a look at how to install radar and sonar into a jail in TrueNAS. Now, what we're not going to do in part one is look at how to configure radar and sonar after they've been installed. That's going to be saved for part two, which we'll be releasing next week if you're watching this video at the time that it's released. Or otherwise, if you're watching it more than a week after I've released this video, it'll be linked somewhere over here. There's a couple of things that we want to do to make sure that this process is as easy as possible for us before we get started. The very first thing is we're going to want to make sure that we've got a jail up and running to install both radar and sonar. Now, if you're not sure how to install jails on TrueNAS, you can go ahead and check out my video on that topic over here. Now in this video, I'm going to go ahead and install sonar and radar in the same jail, but obviously you could install radar in one jail and sonar in another if that's your preference. The next thing that we want to do is make sure that we've got user accounts or groups set up with the user IDs of both Sonar and Radar. So that's a UID of 351 for Sonar and 352 for Radar. You can see here on my system that I've chosen to set up a Radar group with a group ID of 352 and a Sonar group with a group of 351, but you can set up users as well. So why are these groups or users with these specific IDs needed? Well, this is actually the biggest stumbling block I see whenever people are trying to get radar and sonar to work. And it makes sense if you think about it. Both applications are going to be installed in a jail. And normally, the contents of the jail itself are the only thing that they'll have access to. But both applications are there to manage your media. So unless you're installing all of your media within a single jail, which is extremely unlikely as it would be quite cumbersome to manage, it needs a method of breaking out of that jail and being able to access information outside of the jail itself. What will happen here is that during the installation process, Radar and Sonar will go ahead and create a user account and a group within the jail itself with those IDs, with 351 and 352. And then when either of those applications, Sonar or Radar, tries to reach outside of the jail to access content that's not stored within the jail itself, it'll pass on those IDs to TrueNAS. It'll say, hey, TrueNAS, the user with the ID 351 or 352 is trying to access content over here. And then the TrueNAS system will come back and say, what are you talking about? Those users don't exist. Well, now the users do exist, so TrueNAS will have no problem, so long as we give them the correct permissions, which we'll do a little bit later in the video. Now, it doesn't actually matter if you create users or groups, and you can check out my video on how to create either in the link over here, if you're not certain. With both the users created and the jail itself created, the last thing that we want to do before we start any of the installation process is set some mount points on the jail. So what are mount points? Well, they're kind of like a symbolic link that allows the jail to access information outside of the jail. So say, for example, you have a folder on your TrueNAS system called Downloads, and you wanted to make sure that it was accessible by applications within a jail. Normally, the application couldn't break out of the jail itself, but by setting a mount point, we create a symbolic link between that folder and one within the jail. So then applications don't have to have access to the downloads folder somewhere else. They just have to have access to its symbolic link within the jail. And then any changes they make there will also occur on the folder or file somewhere else in your system. In my TrueNAS system, I've gone ahead and created a jail called Multimedia Test. That's the one that I'm going to be using for this installation. So I'm going to go over here and just expand the selection by clicking on the arrow on the right hand side. And then I'm going to have the option to select mount points. Now it is important that the jail is not running when you select the mount points. If it is running, you'll need to select the jail itself. And then there'll be a stop button over here on the top left hand side. Once the jail is stopped, you'll be able to get into the mount points here. And we'll see that there is no mount point set up for this jail at the minute, but I can add one by hitting the blue actions button on the right hand side and then selecting the add option here. Here on this page, I'll be asked for a source directory and a destination directory. So the source directory is always a directory that's outside of the jail and the destination is always the directory that's within the jail that I want to make the symbolic link with. 
Here I'm going to set up a couple of symbolic links. I'm going to do it for a folder called TV shows that store all of my TV shows so that Sonar will have access to them. And I'm going to do it for a directory called movies that contain all of my movies so that Radar can have access to them. And it is important that you separate out your TV shows and your movies so that Radar and Sonar don't interfere with each other, but also so that Plex is more easily able to pick up the difference between the two later on when we install that. I'm also going to do an additional mount point to a downloads folder, which is where my torrenting clients store downloads after they've been completed. That'll allow Sonar or Radar to pick up the particular release and move it into the appropriate folder when it is ready to do so. In my source directory, I can go ahead and expand the mount directory, which will give me access to my pools. If I expand my media pool and then my media data set, I'll have access to all of the directories that contain my media. So for this first example, I'm going to go ahead here and select TV shows for Sonar. So if I scroll down to my destination directory here and scroll down even further, I'll have access to the user directory, which I can go ahead and expand. And then if I scroll down, I'll have the local directory, which I'm going to go ahead and select. We're going to go ahead here and type the rest of this directory structure, which is going to have the impact of creating the actual directories within the jails. Some of those would be created whenever radar and sonar was installed, but it's fine for us to go ahead and create it here as well. One important note, though, is we're about to type the word share, and it's important that the word share has a small s, no capitals. The rest is kind of up to yourself. Finishing off that directory structure, we're going to type forward slash and then the word share, but that's got to be all in lowercase letters. Then another forward slash, and after that, you can type in whatever directory structure you want in whatever combination of lower and uppercase letters you want. So I'm going to go ahead here and type in media and then forward slash TV shows. And then once that's done, I'll scroll here to the bottom and I can click the submit button. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure that read only remains unchecked because we want to be able to read and write to this directory. Once I hit the submit button, TrueNAS will think about it for a few seconds and then it will create the mount point successfully. After I've completed the mapping for the TV shows directory, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process two more times, but do it with my movies directory and then my downloads directory that transmission uses to store my downloads in. And if you've done it correctly, it will look a little bit like this, but obviously the file paths will be custom to your system. The final mount point that I'm going to create is not strictly necessary. We can get everything to work with the existing three mount points. However, Radar in particular gets very picky if it can't find the directory it thinks it's looking for for things like transmission. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to add an extra mount point that maps our downloads folder to the destination that Radar expects to find it, which is the transmissions forward slash home forward slash downloads directory. You don't absolutely have to do this and sonar in, tends to be very happy even if you don't do this but for the sake of making some of those irritating error messages go away i'm going to do it anyway it takes two seconds so once again we go and click the blue actions button and hit add and we can expand our source directory here expand our media pool expand our media data set and then select the downloads directory Scrolling down to the destination, we can go ahead and expand the user directory once more, and then we'll just select the local directory. We can then go ahead and type in forward slash etc, all lowercase letters, and then forward slash transmission, again, all lowercase letters. And it goes without saying, make sure that you spell transmission correctly. Don't be like me who spelled it with only one S and then spent a little bit of time pulling what little hair I have left out, trying to figure out why Radar was giving me an error message that a directory didn't exist when I thought it did. And then forward slash home and then forward slash downloads, which is the directory that I will be using here. Once again, make sure that read only is unselected and then we can hit submit. Now that we've created those mount points, we can go ahead and start up the jail. So to do that, we'll just go ahead and select the jails option on the left hand side here one more time and we'll select our multimedia test and we'll just hit the start button. Usually takes a second or two for things like that to start. So we'll just give it a minute and then we'll refresh the jails page. And we can see here that the jail has started up without any sort of issue. 
The next thing that we're going to do here is make sure that our user accounts have the right permissions on the right shares that we've just created the symbolic links to, to manage all of that media. So the left hand option here, we're just going to expand the storage menu and then select pools. And then if we pick the data set that contains our media and hit the three dots on the right hand side, we can select the option to edit permissions. Now again, you should be selecting the data set that you mounted to the jails in the previous step. That's the one that we're looking to add the permissions to for these user accounts. Once the permissions page has loaded, we can scroll down to the very bottom and then click the add ACL item option. That will give us an extra ACL item that we're able to populate. The who option is a little bit misleading because this is really what type of user would you like to grant the access to. So you've got a couple of options here. I'm going to select group because I created groups for sonar and radar. But if you selected users, then you can go ahead and select the user option here. Then I get asked for the group again, but this time I'm being asked to select which group I'd like to grant the permissions to. So if I scroll down to the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and select my sonar group, which is the right group to apply these permissions to. Then under ACL type and permission type, I'm going to leave those as the default. And the permissions option is by default on modify. Now that is the correct permission, but I've often had some problems with it. So I like to switch that over to full control to this group. Under flags type and flags, we're not going to touch the default options here. Before I go ahead and save any of my permissions, I want to make sure that I add any other group or user to the same ACL items. So I can add another ACL item and select my radar group, for example, which would be appropriate in my case. But you can add whatever group or user needs those permissions now. Once I've added all of the correct permissions, I'm going to go ahead and select this apply permissions recursively. It's going to prompt me with a warning message that this is kind of dangerous. Applying the permissions recursively just means that the groups will have the same permissions on all of the subdirectories within the directory that I'm applying the permission to and any files in those subdirectories as well. Because this is managing my media and all of these directories will contain media, I, that is my intended behavior. That's what I wanted to do. So I'm perfectly fine with this change. I'm going to go ahead and select confirm and then I'll hit the continue button here. I now get the option to apply permissions to child data sets. My media data set doesn't have any child data sets, so I'm not going to select this. But if your media data set does have a child data set that you want to give it access to, you can select this option here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the blue save button and it will take a moment for TrueNAS to save those changes. Now at this stage you're probably wondering, Steve, this is great, but we haven't done any installation of Sonar or Radar. I know there's a lot of pre-work that gets involved here, but the good news is we're finally ready to install both of those applications. So on the left hand side here, we can go back and hit the jails button, which will bring us to our jails. We will select our jail that we're going to install sonar and radar on, expand it with the right hand arrow, and then we'll hit the shell option here to bring us to the command line for the jail itself. So just as we're about to start running commands, a reminder that all of these commands will be in the video description down below, so you can copy and paste them in if that's what you prefer. First command that we'll want to run here is the package command, which is pkg, and then hit enter, and then we'll get prompted that package hasn't actually been installed on the jail. So we're going to hit y for yes, and then hit enter, and it will go ahead and install the package manager after a couple of seconds. Once the package manager has been installed, we can go ahead and install sonar with package install and then sonar. That will take a couple of seconds to complete as well. Once that's complete, we can repeat the same command again, but this time substituting sonar for radar, and it will once again take a few seconds to a few minutes to install. Once both of those are installed, we actually need to update the sysrc file to allow them both to run with the appropriate privileges. That's a pretty straightforward command. It's sysrc and then space with quotation marks, sonar underscore enable equals yes. And that will return a yes value. And then we repeat the same thing again, but we replace the word sonar with the word radar. The final command that we're going to run is not strictly necessary. We're actually going to change ownership of the sonar and radar directory to the sonar and radar users. And the reason that we do this is because it allows us to actually update sonar and radar from the web UI and resolves a couple of other quirks that I've had problems with in the past. 
Not absolutely necessary, but something I would highly recommend that you do. Once again, that's a pretty straightforward command. It's the change ownership command with a hyphen R, which means recursively for the sonar user for the user local share sonar directory. And once we hit enter there, nothing will be returned, but we can repeat the command again, but we'll just change all instances of sonar to radar. And then once again, nothing is returned, which is exactly what we would expect. Now that everything has been installed and all of our permissions have been updated correctly, we should be able to start the service with the service sonar start command. And if we don't get any error messages back, we can reliably expect that it has in fact started. So we can go ahead and try and start the radar service as well. Once again, we get no error messages back, which is a good sign. The only definitive method that we have to ensure the service is running though is to try and visit the web page. So you can do that by visiting the IP address for the jail that they're installed on, but we do need to specify the port for the web page as well. It's not the default port that web pages are normally on. For sonar it's actually 8989 and for radar it's 7878. So we can do this by specifying the IP address and then a colon and then 8989 after the address. And if I hit enter there, I can see that I can reach the sonar web UI, which means that the service is running correctly. And then we can repeat that process, but change the port to 7878 for radar and see that once again, I'm able to reach the web GUI, which means that everything is running successfully. So that's it guys, that's how you'd install Sonar and Radar in a jail in TrueNAS. If you'd like to check out part 2 where we actually configure both Sonar and Radar, you can hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever that gets released. Otherwise I might ask you to do the rest of the YouTube dance, which is to leave a like and possibly a comment letting me know what you thought of this video. Otherwise I will catch you guys on the flip side.